Hello, good morning, and welcome to Damir Solutions. Turning sensor data KPIs for energy efficiency and space utilization. We welcome you this morning to this learning session. This is an educational event and a uh, few items that we want to cover, rules of engagement and communication for today. This is an um, educational uh, um, session. It's being led by um, Senior Project Engineer Matt View. As uh, most uh, events you attend these days, uh, we will be um, recording and distributing this uh, session to all registrants. Um, rules of engagement, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're really looking for feedback and questions and challenges on you know, what we're doing, how we're doing things, um, you know, demonstration of, my, of our ideas and the technology. It really is, um, you know, for an, edu you know, an education point of view of how things can be done and um, of the process that we have developed. So this is uh, the second in a um, series on strategic asset management and facilities intelligence. Um, first time through, we uh, led a demonstration and discussion on creating, maintaining, managing a digital master asset list. If you uh, missed that, it's um, a recording is available on our website, denimura.com, uh, within our knowledge center. Um, go to the online learning section um, for creating, maintaining um, a digital master asset list. And as we progress through the series, um, you know, once we have the data, once we have the digital master asset list, it brings us to our topic today. Um, you know, the collection, the analysis, the display of that data, the whys, you know, what are the calculations, you know, what are the trends, you know, how can we help facilities engineering and utility directors work together improving you know overall all overall data um, collection and, and um, sharing so uh, what we're going to uh, talk about today and demonstrate is um, how you know these mechanisms have enabled uh, improvements in energy efficiency um, facility sustainability and space util space utilization um, I've set the bar pretty high um, and uh, I'd like to introduce the man who's going to solve all the world's problems here <laughs> this morning uh, Mr. Matt View. Matt is a uh, senior project engineer uh, with Data Mirror Solutions and uh, chief architect of what we're going to show uh, here today. Um, Matt is very, uh, I like to call it, you know, try to stump Matt. If I can stump Matt, I know I'm doing something good. So, um, you know, I challenge the, the audience that if you'd like, uh, you know, to ask some specific pointed questions about what he's doing here, um, you know, in the questions panel, We'll, uh, we'll attempt to get all questions answered uh, by the end of the session. So without further ado, Matt View, the floor is yours. Thanks, Bill. Uh, appreciate the glowing introduction there. I hope I don't let anybody on too far. Um, but like Bill led into here, uh, what I'm going to be showing today is kind of a typical setup that we would do for a client of our Data Mara Intelligence Dashboard. And I'm kind of be, going to be sharing some lessons learned and how we've utilized the same kind of setup at other clients to achieve our business objectives. So kind of one of the very first things we would always want to do is sit down with the facilities owners, with the maintenance managers, with all of the stakeholders in a dashboard like this and figure out what the business objectives are at that particular site. And then once we know that, we can customize and tweak um, any of these screens you're about to see to really hone in on your business objectives. So when we start talking about sensors and KPIs and all that, the first question always is, well, where's the data coming from? Um, it's a good question. And honestly, it's up to you guys. Um, our solution is pretty product agnostic. We're not looking to, we have to hook up to Siemens or we have to hook up to Rockwell or we, it must be XYZ system, otherwise we can't help you. No, no, that's not what we want to do. We want you to keep your systems that you already have in place and are already producing loads of data for you and we want to just bring it to your fingertips. We want to make it as easy as we possibly can for you to have the data at your disposal. So on the screen, you can see this is a trend chart of a couple sensor points, a temperature point and a flow rate. This is just some dummy data, so the numbers aren't super meaningful here, but it gives you an idea of what you can grab. Um, the beauty of this is 
I didn't have to log into my BMS. I didn't have to log into my historian that ha only has three licenses. I'm pulling this in with an API and here we go. Anybody who needs it can get it. So I can give this access, give this to the environmental person in facilities who needs to run reports on what the flow rate is of our water meters on a monthly basis. And even beyond that, the benefit of this is now I'm not tied to the monthly reports that we would typically be seeing out of a BMS type system. Now I can pull this data whenever I need it. If I need to look at it three hours in a row because we're making changes, I can. If I only need to look at it once a month, I can. Um, it's, it's as flexible as you need it to be. And that's really our goal here is to make the system as flexible as we possibly can for you guys. Um, so like I said, this is basic chin chart. One nice feature that this does offer over most BMSs is the ability to export your data right here and get nice JPEG images of it. And the other nice thing is you have the ability to schedule emailed reports to you that way you can still keep up some semblance of the monthly report that you're used to getting if that's what you want. Um, so you can set this up to send to you daily, weekly, monthly, whenever you want. Realistically, we can set it up to send to you. Um, but again, you're setting up the reports you want and you can set these up however you want them. So you're not subject to whatever the historian manager has time to build. You build it yourself, you save it, and you get it whenever you want it. Um, but sensors are just kind of the tip of the iceberg. This is great data to have and it leads to a lot of good stuff, but it's the tip of the iceberg. Um, other kinds of data we are often pulling in is our occupancy data. Everybody wants to know how many people are coming into their site, how many people are using their facility, and how does their utilization actually look. So one iteration that that ends up taking is pulling a list of by campus or by building, however you want to filter it, how many people are coming in. So in this particular setup, this is meant to mimic a kind of standard office where you have to badge into the building and you count how many people are badged in per day. Um, at this particular client, we were, uh, are pulling in a report daily to get this, these numbers, uh, and it's just all automated. We pull it in based on the report that they have set up for us, and here we go. Um, in the past, we've had to get a little um, more interesting intricate into the data. Um, at one client, you know, we had like a limit switch on a door kind of thing where we weren't able to tell you exactly how many people were in the building over any given period of time, but we were able to get a rough idea at least of how many times the door had opened and it was good enough for their business objectives. Um, we also have a chart here that shows more of what we call the time-based view of it. So at certain sites we're able to, where we have a kind of more of a turnstile setup and we have badge in badge out we're able to go in here and very uniquely say okay how many people are actually in the building at any given time um, this one this chart you can see is sampling it at five minute intervals so you get a pretty granular view this could be set up to go as granular as you wanted down to the second if you really wanted so that might be a little bit extreme for most people. But you have this data right here at your fingertips. Some use cases that we've seen where this is very helpful are our sustainability managers. We're looking to do HVAC um, setbacks and basically turn the air handlers off at night when nobody's in the building. And we were able to use this data to validate that, okay, here's the times that people are actually getting out of the building and I can turn the air handler off. And here's the time people are getting back in. So here's when I need to turn it back on to catch up to that. Um, another great use of that obviously with COVID has been making sure that we are maintaining our social distancing and that we only have X number of people in the building that it can actually support with safe social distancing. Uh, we're able to back it up with hard numbers and say, yep, here we are. Um, there were no questions after that because the data tells the story for you. You don't have to back it up. Another 
great use of this has been for overall capital pr planning a little bit. So we're able to see, okay, are we actually using the building for its full potential? You know, we can go in and look and see, okay, this building has 2,000 seats, and on any given day, we're peaking out around 1,700 people. We've still got some room to grow into it. We don't really need to look at acquiring a new building next year. That can wait. We can push that off. Um, we've had use cases where we used, have used similar numbers here to look and see, okay, well, this building is set up as a mixed-use office building, but everybody's coming to a different building to have their meetings. And we can see that in the numbers here because the occupancy drops lower in the middle of the day than it really should be. If people were staying in the building, we should be able to see that. So that's the kind of insights we're trying to make available to you at your fingertips, ready to go whenever, whenever you need them. Um, so with that, there's other kinds of data we have available to us as well, though. Uh, for example, we have an events calendar in here. By default, we load in just public events that you might want your staff to see, you know, um, holidays, maybe you have happy hours or something like that. But for your facility staff, you can also load in things like, okay, here's when we're doing a big equipment replacement and we've got senior leadership coming on site these days. Um, and that helps us plan things out in advance and say, okay, well, on the 21st, I've got senior leadership coming in. I don't want to be doing major equipment replacement when I've got senior leadership in the building. I want to wait until they're out of the way and everything's pristine for them. Um, so it just lets us plan our work and be as efficient as we possibly can. And that's really the goal of this whole portal is to help the maintenance managers and facilities managers out there, equipment owners, be as efficient as they can with their time because they can pull all of this data in one single spot whenever they need it. So another typical use of this would be pull in work order data. So obviously you want to be trending your work order KPIs and seeing how we're keeping up with our backlog. Um, are, do we have, are we keeping up with the priority work orders? What's going on in our different departments? Are my techs actually closing their work orders even if the work is done? That kind of thing. So great charts here. We can break it out however you want it really. This one is just shown showing your uh, total count broken out by the different work order types, whether it's your PMs, your corrective actions, or any calibration work that needs to be done on site. Um, you can choose in this configuration to separate that out and look at how much money is associated with it, um, not just count. Um, and again, this is pretty flexible. This can be set up to show whatever you need it to show. Um, so if you have different names, you have different things you want to sort by, um, like here we can also sort by work centers or by specific buildings. If you want to sort by different things, great. Happy to plug those in, get those all set up to meet your needs and get your business objectives where they need to be. All of these charts you can see here have a time selector range. You can kind of see what time period you want to see. Do you want to look at the last week or do you want to look at the last month? Now, obviously things vary and you might want to drill in on looking at the time periods around when you've made critical actions. If you've made a change in your work management procedure, you're going to want to go in and view how is that actually working for you? Is it having the desired effect? Uh, this gives you a quick way of doing that without waiting for your monthly reports that you're probably getting already. You can view it pretty much on demand. For work order data, we're typically pulling this in about weekly, uh, but the frequency is set by whatever is needed. So in an instance like that where we know we have a big change, maybe for two weeks we pull it in every single day and just see what's going on. We can get a fresh picture whenever we need. We can also get more granular for those who need to and just dig into specific work orders and pull up a list and start searching and filtering and drilling down to specific work orders and looking to see exactly what's going on with whatever problem child asset we're working on. Um, 
but we're also able to aggregate that up real easy and get you the information you need. And speaking of aggregation, that's been a big effort for our energy team in particular of looking at what is our actual electrical consumption over XYZ time period and how does that trend over time? So you can see here, here's kind of a pre-canned report we built out for them looking at what the electrical consumption was for all of these different buildings and saying, okay, obviously we have one building that's the majority of the draw, which is fine based on the setup of the campus. It's kind of what we expected to see, but now we can track that out and we can group it by week, by day. We can see how we're doing. We can identify our outliers and then start to dig in of, okay, well, what happened on that day? Was it because on that particular day, my occupancy was through the roof and my HVAC was really struggling to keep up? Or was it because we had some sort of a maintenance event going on and we were plugging things in and whatever it might be? Gives us a way of start drilling in and identifying outliers, identifying problems, and addressing the problems as we find them. Um, another big one, Similar in nature here is electrical production. So at this particular site, we had a couple of cogen plants going on. So we got two engines. We wanted to compare the engines to each other to see, you know, which one is the workhorse or do we have a problem child? You know, what's going on with those particular uh, in assets? And how do those numbers aggregate up and how does it help us offset our load from the grid? So we're, with this, we're able to say, okay, well, we generated X, Y, Z amount, and we're able to tell you this long before the utility gets around to giving us our bill and credit, which I'm sure many of you already know, at least at this site, has been a big issue in that the utility gives you a bill monthly, sometimes quarterly, depending on who you're working with, and is that enough granularity to actually make substantial changes and understand your data? Eh, that kind of depends. For us, the answer a lot of times was no. We needed more granularity. We needed to be able to pull this in directly and look at it at a daily level and really be able to key in on that kind of information. And when we're keying in, we can go into our strategic asset portal and start looking at particular assets and trying to find out specifics about that asset if we want to get into that level of detail. Um, so you can see here, I've got a particular tank pulled up. Uh, right now we're looking at the various uh, process points that it has. So you can start digging in and identifying issues or saying that no issues. It's exactly what I expected it to be. Just wanted to look at it. You can look at your work history and get a look at the KPIs for work history and say, okay, yeah, the meantime between failures a little lower than I'd really like. Maybe we want to start thinking about doing some sort of refurbishment on this tank. Uh, whatever it might be to help keep the plant running at its peak efficiency. The point here though is we can pull all of this data for these assets, we can aggregate it up into reports like this, and we can start to truly develop a program that keeps the plant running efficiently as a whole. We're not just putting out fires, we, we can start to see the trend. So we've got the data at our fingertips, bouncing between occupancy and different reports, um, what events we had on site so we can start to diagnose where our issues are, when they were happening, and fixing issues we see in the field. Um, and kind of the last tab I'll pull up here is just a KP, general KPIs page. And this is just showing you in this particular one, kind of my backlog of work orders. Obviously, this can be set up to whatever we want it to, um, but this is one that we find is pretty relatable to a lot of people because everybody has a backlog of work that they need to get done. And this is, gives us a way of tracking that and seeing, are we making a dent in it? Are we keeping up? Or do we need to plan on adding more headcount because we're not keeping up with our backlog? Um, this particular one, you can group by various work centers. You can even group it by employees. So uh, managers who want to get a little bit more granular can come in here and see how various employees are, are performing. Um, and you can, like 
we've seen before with everything, you can start looking at this at different uh, time intervals, looking at it at the granularity that makes sense for you. And with that, we also have reports. Um, KPIs and reports, essentially the same thing in this um, instance. This is more for more detailed engineering KPIs. So like you can see here, this, this particular one that we have loaded here is for the cogen plants. It was really starting to delve in and get into some specific engineering parameters around the engines and pulling those whenever you want. Um, but again, the benefit of this is it wasn't something that you wait till the end of the month for. It's you pull it whenever you need. And because this report is linked up to the BMS, it's pulling all of the most current data. So you can pull it whenever you need it and you can see how things are going. So that's the Data Mirror Intelligence Dashboard at a high level here. At this point, I'd like to open it up for questions from the audience and go from there. Bill? Thank you, Matt. Very well done, uh, very succinct um, for each module. Thank you, that was, uh, that was good. We do have some questions. I'll let you um, take a breath and let me get the, uh, get the control back here. So yes, please, um, while um, I'm switching over, um, Matt, the first question comes in uh, two parts. First being, um, at what frequency do you need to be pulling the data and do they, have, do they vary across the different systems? Right, so that's a good question. Uh, I'll start with the second part, actually. It, it absolutely varies across system. Uh, what you're pulling in is going to be dependent on this kind of data you're looking at, obviously. So for like uh, your historian data, we're going to want to pull that in at yeah, probably hourly, uh, maybe a little less depending on what you're looking at, but you're going to want to see that close to real time. Uh, for work orders though, that's going to come from your CMMS, probably in most cases weekly. Um, might need, again, like I was saying in the presentation, you might need to up that frequency at in some instances, but for the most part, you're going to be looking at a much longer period between data pulls for stuff like that. Great. Okay. Um, two. Um, what kind of what kind or variety of reports does this generate? So the reporting variety is up to your imagination, essentially. So you can, like I was showing in the automation data, you can kind of build your own reports there and have those set up to email you whenever you want. Uh, the pre-canned reports I was showing, those were sit based on sitting down with sustainability managers and saying, okay, here's what we want this to look like for this setup. And we programmed it in and got it ready to go. Uh, in the actual reports module, it's kind of the same thing. It's whatever parameters you need, we provide, assuming you have the data, of course. Great, thank you, Matt. Okay, this looks like a request, and I'll just read it to you. Um, in the upcoming presentation, can you possibly show how these inputs can help design for new equipment installations and how reliability is tied into this? Is that something yeah. we can address in a future? Absolutely, I think that's something we can address in the next one and really delving into more of the specifics of getting more granular with it and how we can understand both at a high level of what capital we're gonna to need to um, allocate for specific upgrades and how we identify that based on the granularity of having that digital master asset list telling us where, where we need to allocate everything. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll um address this as we um, will announce our next uh, learning online learning session um, conclusion and in our follow-up communications um, to this audience we'll um, include that in, in the q a um, section all right um, here's a data question matt um, what about missing data from source systems yeah so that's a great question that's an issue we have faced quite a bit at this client site is that sometimes the data just isn't there. Um, depending on what data we're talking about, 
sometimes we can write algorithms around it to kind of cl artificially clean the data um, in a more or less automated approach. So for example, with the occupancy screen I was showing where we were doing the badge in, badge out, that system's not perfect. Um, sometimes the system doesn't read the badge perfectly or you forget your badge and your buddy badges you in, depending on how strict your security is at that site, that kind of thing. Um, so in cases like that, we can absolutely automate in some data cleansing and making sure we get the data in. In some of the data, uh, for example, like work orders, if the tech doesn't put in the correct information, there's only so much we can do about that. But at least now you're able to see that you don't have all the information you do and you can take a process action to go back to your maintenance team and start saying, okay, guys, we really have to do a better job of filling out the work orders completely. Here's the fields that we're missing and start to get the data coming in in the future. Great. Well, looks like we have a follow-up to that about the data. Um, how do you ensure data security? Yeah, so that's really going to depend on the requirements that are set up at the beginning. The biggest thing we would typically do is we're going to limit this to being accessed over the client network. So if you don't have access to the client network, if you're not behind the client firewall, you're not going to get it anyway. Um, there, and then on top of that, we can then uh, plug in our own permissions to say, okay, Maintenance managers need to be able to see work orders by employee, but that's something we really don't need to show to everybody. So we'll put a permission on top of that and hide it from the general public. Good, thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, shifting gears a little bit. Um, are we able to forecast upcoming maintenance or maintenance coming up? Yeah, so that kind of depends on what we mean by upcoming maintenance. Um, if we're looking for work orders that are in the system but not yet started, absolutely we can see those uh, through our report pulling. If you're talking about predictive maintenance, um, that really depends on the sensors and predictability that you have on the assets. So if you have a vibration program already up and running, then yes, we can absolutely pull in that data and build it into this dashboard to show you what equipment we think is going to fail in the next three months. Um, if you don't already have that, we can absolutely make our recommendations and help you get it set up, but we are still kind of waiting for the data to come in to be able to forecast anything upcoming. Okay, thank you, Matt. And looks like we have uh, two more questions. Um, sure. Can the KPIs for space utilization be used for capital planning? Absolutely, they can be used for capital planning. And in fact, they have been used for capital planning here at this site I'm working at. Um, like I was saying, we were able to identify that one of our buildings wasn't really configured the way it needed to be configured based on how many people are coming into the building and the space setup that was in that building. And we were able to identify that we needed to allocate funding in the coming quarter to build in more conference rooms, for example. Okay. Good, thank you, Matt. And I think we have, unless anyone has any more for the, um, in the chat or question panel. Um, the last question, um, I've sat in both of these sessions. What is your biggest lesson learned from the project to date? Yeah, so the biggest lesson learned uh, from this project was that we have to validate the integrity of the source data coming in for everything. So we found that while yes, we have quite a bit of data, there have been a couple different times where we have to validate it and cleanse the data to meet the needs of the client. Um, some of that we're able to automate with, uh, like, for, like I was saying, with the occupancy, we can automate that and that we were able to code and nobody really has to think about it. Some of it is a more manual process where you have to go in and look at it once a week or once a month uh, and figure out what exactly the issues are. But having good, making sure your data integrity is solid is kind of the first step to all of this actually working. And that, that's been our biggest lesson learned from this project. Fantastic. 
Well, it looks like we're at our conclusion of our Q&A and uh, our prepared remarks. I would like to thank uh, everyone for attending this morning. And uh, as mentioned, you will each receive a uh, copy of the recorded session in your um, via email uh, that you registered for this uh, within 24 hours. We, um, we're back at it later in the year with uh, our next live session in our series, uh, ma maintaining and managing engineering change requests uh, through this um, through this portal uh, demonstration and discussion. You can always keep up to date on us via our website, our LinkedIn profile page, and Matt and I can both be contacted at info at datamira.com if you have any follow-up questions or comments or communications. Once again, thank you on behalf of um, Datamira Solutions and Matthew View. Thank you for attending this morning. I look forward to speaking again in December.